you have mastered the algebraic multiplication, the time has come that you become the king of the algebraic division as well. So, how fast can you divide these algebraic expressions? That is, you have to divide this huge polynomial with this linear binomial. And yes, you read it right. You are getting 15 seconds to do that. I really don't know why I'm being so generous to you this time. I'm giving you 15 long seconds. Can you beat that? If you know this is the trick, then it will not take you more than 10 seconds. Start. Your time is up, so let me do it. x cube divided by x is x square, and you have the first term of the answer. Put plus two over here. Plus two x square minus nine x square is minus seven x square. So I'll put minus seven x, and this is the second term of the answer. Plus two times minus seven x is minus fourteen x. Minus fourteen x plus seventeen x is plus three x. So I'll put plus 3 and this is my final answer. In case you want to know the remainder, I can even tell you that. Plus 2 times plus 3 is plus 6. Plus 6 minus 4 is plus 2. So the remainder is plus 2. Now, as you have just seen, using this very simple easy cal trick, I have managed to divide this huge polynomial directly and that too with so much ease and I not only gave you the quotient I gave you the remainder as well how good is that so now tell me honestly are you impressed well if you are then don't be for the simple reason that very soon you would also be dividing even bigger polynomials than this in just few seconds let's first see the usual way of doing the algebraic division the name of the method is long division. You might already be using it. Now, as the name itself is long division, so you know what to expect. You start by dividing the first term of the dividend by the first term of the divisor. x cube divided by x will give us x square. In case you are wondering, how did I get x square on dividing x cube with x? I just use the laws of exponents. I'll just put it down for you. x cube divided by x. As per the laws of exponents, in division, you simply subtract the powers when the bases are same. So the power of this x is 3 and the power of this x is 1. There's an invisible one there. So since we are dividing it, we'll simply subtract the powers. This will become 3 minus 1, which is nothing but x squared. And that is what I had put over there. But I'm sure you can do that directly. You don't need to put down these steps. Now, whatever term you put here at the top, you have to multiply that with all the terms of the divisor. That means you're going to multiply this x square with this x and also with this minus 2. And whatever you get after that multiplication, you're going to put it here. x square times x is x cubed. And x square times minus 2 is minus 2x square. Now you subtract these terms. Now you might be already aware that subtraction in algebra means changing the signs and then adding the terms. Since this is plus x cube, so it will become minus x cube. We change the sign and this is minus 2x square, so it will become plus 2x square. This positive x cube and this negative x cube will cancel each other out. So you strike it out. Minus 9x square plus 2x square is minus 7x square. And you simply drop down these remaining terms. So this is a new dividend. And once again we repeat the same process. That is we divide the first term of this new dividend by the first term of this divisor. Minus 7x square Divide by x is minus 7x. 
and once again we multiply this answer term with all the terms of the divisor minus 7x times x will give us minus 7x square minus 7x times minus 2 will give us plus 14x now once again you subtract it by changing the sign this is minus 7x square so it will become plus 7x square this is plus 14x so it will become minus 14x minus 7x square plus 7x square they cancel each other out and 17x minus 14x is 3x drop down this minus 4 so this is our new dividend and once again we repeat the same process again that is divide the first term of this new dividend with the first term of the divisor so 3x divided by this x is 3 so we put positive 3 there now multiply this 3 with all the terms of the divisor 3 times x is 3x and 3 times minus 2 is minus 6 and once again you subtract it by changing the sign this is plus 3x, so it will become minus 3x. This is minus 6, it will become plus 6. These terms cancel out. This is minus 4 plus 6, which is plus 2. And finally, we have solved this question. So whatever is left here will be the remainder. This answer that we have got at the top is called the quotient in technical terms. The polynomial that was being divided is known as the dividend. And the polynomial that was dividing is known as the divisor. Now, it is interesting to note how the powers of x are gradually reducing in the quotient or the answer see here it was x square here it became x to the power 1 and here it disappeared completely that means it must have become x to the power 0 now in case you found this method of long division really long and really complicated then let me tell you that whole world uses it to do their algebraic division if that makes you feel any better if that doesn't make you feel any better then this surely would for I'm going to make you fly directly to the answer without putting any of these steps how good is that so let's do algebraic equations now so let's start with a quick introduction so that even if you don't know much right now about algebraic equations in just few minutes from now you will know a lot about them well in fact you'll feel like an expert yourself so can you tell me what is an algebraic equation like if I write 4x minus 8 and ask you what is that so I'm sure you would say that since an equal to sign is missing, so it must be an algebraic expression. But then, if I put it equal to something, let's say if I put it equal to 0, then it becomes an algebraic equation. Now let's say if I ask you that is this an algebraic expression or an algebraic equation. So I'm sure that you would say that since this tail is missing so it must be an algebraic expression. Look at that expression on its face. To make it into an algebraic equation we just have to so now it is the algebraic equation see this is an algebraic expression and you put its tail and it becomes an algebraic equation I hope it's very clear now
the difference between the algebraic expression and the algebraic equation. Let me give you a very interesting fact. Human mind always stores information as images, not words. Thus I try to give you as many images as possible while explaining new things. This way you'll never forget what you're learning. So now let us see what are the different parts of an equation. This alphabet part that you are seeing here, it is called a variable. It is the most important part of any algebraic equation because its value is unknown. The entire purpose of having this algebraic equation is to find a suitable value for this x. So now can you label this minus 8 for me? It is called a constant. Now as you can imagine, it is called a constant because it has a fixed value. See, this 8 will remain an 8, come what may. It cannot become 5, it cannot become 6 or take any other value. It will remain constant. Whereas this x, it can take any suitable value. It can vary, it can change and that is why it is called a variable. See, it makes perfect sense. By the way, this 0 is also a constant. So now just one more part is left. So can you tell me the name of this 4? What do you call it? Right. It is called the coefficient. One very important thing to note here is that that the operation in between this coefficient and this variable is always multiplication. There is an invisible multiplication sign in between. Please always remember that. By the way, that is meant to be unknown. So now tell me, how to solve an equation? Now this is a linear equation. And any equation has two sides, LHS and RHS. LHS means left hand side and RHS means right hand side. Like a tennis court, it has two sides. See, the left hand side and the right hand side. So basically, all the variables, they live on one side. And all the constants and the coefficients, they live on the other side. Like this side belongs to only the variables. And on the other side, all the constants and coefficients live. See, such an interesting match is going on with Roger Federer on one side and Rafael Nadal and Maria Sharapova on the other. So let's find out who's going to win. Now here you can see that all the players, they are standing on one side. So we have to take this thing to the other side, that is this constant, as well as this coefficient to the other side. And we are done. In every game, there are some rules to be followed. So let's find out what are the rules of this game, the mathematical lawn tennis. Rule number one is, when the side is changed, the sign of the operation with respect to the variable also changes. Basically, it becomes opposite of what it was. Let's say it is plus on this side. Then when it's going to go to the other side, it will become minus. If it's minus, it will become plus. See, it becomes opposite of what it was. Using the same logic, if it's times, that is multiplication, it will become division. And if it's division, it will become multiplication. So the rules are very simple. Let's start the game. So let's take this minus 8 to the other side. Now as you can see, that the operation with respect to the variable is minus. So, when it goes to the other side, it will become plus 8. And now is the turn of this coefficient to go to the other side. Now, since this 4 
is being times with this x. So when it goes to the other side, it will get divided. So we simply put x equal to 8 over 4. Since 4 2 times is 8, this means x equal to 2 and this equation is solved. And with that, the game is over. So can you tell me, what are the different types of equations? Like if you are trying to classify them on the basis of the highest power of variable, then it can be a linear equation. Let me give you an example. This is the same equation we saw a few moments back. And here you can see, that the highest power of x is 1. So any equation which has the highest power of variable as 1 will be called the linear equation. So I'm sure now you can easily guess what quadratic equations are. Any equation which has the highest power of the variable as 2 will be a quadratic equation. Let me put down an example for you. So as you can see that the highest power of variable is 2 though there is another x which has 1 as the power but we are not concerned with that we are just concerned with the highest power of variable so obviously 2 is the higher power then the third type would be a cubic equation and I'm sure by now you must have guessed it that here the highest power must be cube that is 3 The highest power is 3 for a cubic equation. So you must have realized by now that everything in mathematics follows a smooth pattern and once we recognize that pattern then everything else falls into its place. That is the beauty of mathematics. See 1, 2, 3. Can you spot the pattern? So now let's look at the fourth type of equation that is disguised quadratic equations. Let me give you an example. You'll be really surprised to know that even this equation is a quadratic equation but it is disguised or hidden. You can say that it is working undercover like James Bond and the name of this disguised quadratic equation is bi-quadratic equation. Even this equation is a quadratic equation, but it is disguised. And this particular type is called trigonometric quadratic equations. The equations can also be classified based on the number of variables, like this equation. Now, as you can see, here there are two variables, x and y. So, in order to solve this equation, we need at least one more equation in x and y like this now we can easily find the values of x and y and that is why these equations are also called system of equation so now you have had a bird's eye view of what we would be learning in the next videos so now quickly load the next video.